Hey, good morning to you. It's uh, obviously uh, you, you never like to lose games, uh, particularly when you don't feel like you played your best. But um, a lot of a lot of things that um, that I liked from it, especially the defense. Um, I thought they played extremely hard, and um, there were some and shorthanded. Um, really easily could have uh, probably held those guys to around 13 points. The two touchdown passes, we were down to our third team, weak safety, who um, obviously didn't get enough reps. Um, but when Kaufman went down, we had to take uh, Wooten and move him down there. And, um, you know, we just we blew two coverages, you know, with uh, with a guy that just hadn't played a lot of snaps. and. Um, we got to we got to just keep creating depth. But I thought they played, um, you know, a really solid game, and uh, proud of uh, that side and the staff. Obviously, offensively, um, I know you'll find this hard to believe, but it uh, you watch the tape and there was a lot of good things in the first half, and should have should have left the first half with a minimum of twelve points. Um, the two holding calls that. We had first and 10 inside the 30 on both of them that uh, put us in behind the chains. We're not quite good enough yet to survive that. Um, and those were, we were running the ball f effectively. And uh, then the the pressure was, was a good bit on us for sure when we had to get in those throwing downs. And I think they have one of the more talented defensive fronts, but we had people open and um, it was a mixture of, I think, us not standing in there and making a throw, and then uh, also some some times where I don't think we had time to uh, adequately step up and make the throw. So we've got to continue to work and coach that better, and um, and get us more consistent and stay out of the negative uh, play situations where um, we we easily could have had some points in that first half and made that. A game, so that's the frustrating part of it for sure. And uh, man, but excited to be back home to play uh, one of the gold standards in college football right now, uh, with what Coach Smart has done there, and uh, in his eighth season, is uh, he's got it rolling. And so it'll be a great test for us. Thank God we're at Jordan Hare. I know it will be electric. And um, we're, we're going to get the kids that are healthy enough. We're going to get them ready to play and, and compete in this game. Hugh, when you go on the road, the two things you can't do, turn the ball over and get get penalties in general. You didn't turn the ball over at all on the road in the SEC, but then you had 10 penalties. So how did you address that on Saturday, and how do you address that moving forward? Well, um, there's four of them that um, I, I didn't like, and I, I, I've turned them in. I don't. I don't see them. Then there's three that uh, two were intentional to try to back us up to to punt and uh, give Oscar a little more room to try to pin them deep. Um, the false start can happen. We had one of those. Um, trying to remember what the others were. There was a holding call on a pass play that was uh, probably legit. Um, so I mean, it was it was a mixed bag. You can't have ten penalties though for whatever reason, and uh, it put us behind the chains. And thought we controlled the second quarter. I think we had it for twelve minutes and came away with three points, which that's I think that defines the game. You you control the ball twelve minutes and a quarter, you got to get some points. And we we certainly felt like um, we were in field goal range, at least forget touchdowns. Let's just say we were in field goal range on, on four, four different occasions and got knocked out either because of penalties or a sack after that. And, um, those were that, that's really where the game. And then the seven minute span in the third quarter, um, where we did not get any first downs and, um, and they got explosive plays. Uh, for whatever reasons, I think just flipped the game. So uh, can't have the 10 penalties, and that's not typically who we are, and we've got to get that cleaned up. Good to see us not turn it over. Are you still heading into this week, think, with the same mindset of Peyton as QB1 and Robbie will 
get his touches in, in some facet. Yeah, we're still kind of uh, wading through that, but uh, that's probably uh, where we'll land this week also. Yeah, the protection on the offensive line, I guess from what you said in your opening statement, kind of felt like sometimes holding on to the ball a little too much. Sometimes, um, you know, the line breaking down on the sacks, just kind of how did you see those sacks kind of? Yeah, it's a combination. You know, I think there's uh, times that uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a plethora of responsibility, but ultimately it lands in my lap and the lap of the offensive coaches to uh, – um, make sure the routes are run at the correct depth and, uh, with the correct releases against the correct coverage. And then obviously the protection has to be good, which is it's very hard to, to do that in third and long situations against a talented defensive front that you see in these leagues. Um, and there were some times where, you know, the ball should have come out and it didn't. So I, I think it's uh, the responsibility lies um, in a lot of different places but uh then you know he also had a great third down throw that puts us back in scoring position that we didn't catch um and so it's it's it it it's a combination of things and um uh, but ultimately like i said it it lies with uh with us the coaching staff to to get those things fixed it's fo following up on on the uh, quarterbacks talked about kind of Peyton probably being the one that you were going to look at this this week is you said that he has to keep earning the job. I guess how does he earn the job going forward at this point? Well, certainly with more consistent play, but there's again, there's times I feel like we've we've let both Peyton and Robbie and Holden or whoever the quarterback is, I feel like we have let them down because of all the other components that go into the passing game. And um, that is where I'm determined to try to help get fixed this week before you give some final grade on on a quarterback's play. Um, it's just like when Robbie came in, you know, I thought he I thought he made a, a two really nice throws on on two deep balls, and I thought the routes were were, were not run correctly. And um, so I know that quarterbacks and coaches get. The, the blame, coaches, we deserve it. Quarterbacks don't always probably deserve it. Um, and so I think, again, I've said we're still a work in progress with, with the roster that we have. And uh, I think this I've always kind of had in my mind that uh, you, we have a – I kind of divide the season up. So there's, there's a season one, which is the season up until the, until the open week. And um, then you've got a lot of evaluating to do that open week as to how you move forward from there. He already a roster that was was pretty beat up. Physical game on Saturday. Any updates on Damari Zion and, and some of those guys we saw go down on Saturday? Yeah, Damari will be out uh, for for a period of time for sure. Um, I think they're doing some more tests today on that. But he he had a dislocated shoulder for sure, and it's just a matter of. You know, sometimes those things can heal on their own in time. Sometimes they 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 require more more work, and uh, we we don't really don't know. Uh, Kaufman tried, but uh, just kept being gimpy with the, with with the ankle, and uh, we'll have to see how he is day to day uh, for sure. Um, Puckett obviously left with a shoulder, and that really hurt us. He was. He was doing a good job of, of keeping us on the same page back there in our coverages, and that really cost us two touchdowns um, when we had to move Wooten to, to go to, to, to the nickel position um, because uh, J.D. Rhyme couldn't play, and we already you know, were without Keontae and Kaufman, and, and so that uh, really took a toll on us and hurt us there. But um, all of those guys will be day-to-day. -day. I don't think it's anything that's going to – keep them out for a significant amount of time, but but day to day. Coach, how do you how would you characterize what you guys were trying to accomplish early in the game on Saturday offensively? And um, would you would you point more toward execution or game plan? How much of that do you wear as a coaching staff? Loved the game plan. Thought we ran the ball really, really well the first two quarters. Had explosive runs again controlled the entire second quarter with the run game and just didn't convert any drives and for the reasons I've already mentioned. Uh, so uh, second half game plan could have been better. Um, 
particularly in the third quarter. Um, but um, certainly I felt really good about the, the first half and, and the way we, I thought, blocked them, um, made a few mistakes that really hurt us um, on a few calls that uh, should have been executed. And obviously we haven't coached it well enough uh, that I thought would have been even more explosive plays. Got to transition and block better at the perimeter uh, that made those 10-yard runs, 20-yard runs. So we've still got it. We, we've got a lot of coaching to do on that side of the ball, but I, th I thought the game plan was really solid when you look at the film. People are running open. Uh, go watch the film. I mean, on the, on the routes that were designed, you know, either we didn't have enough time or we missed. We had a wheel route. This is probably a touchdown, and uh, we overthrow it and um, had a seam route with Fromm running wide open. Missed that. Um, just, you know, you, we've got to make those plays when we have them. But uh, a lot of those designs were pretty good. Then we either have to coach it better or, or we've got to execute it better. It's a combination. Me? All right. Um, you played in some or coached in some major rivalry games, including the Egg Bowl. Where does Georgia Auburn kind of stand up compared to that? Well, I mean, I don't want to quote something that's inaccurate, but it, I, I, it's the oldest rivalry in the South for sure. I don't, I don't know about nationally, but um, it's 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 am I, am I saying that correctly? Um, so um, I I don't sense that it has. Uh, um, I better not. I don't know. If this is right or wrong, but I'm new here. <laughs> but I, I don't sense the hatred that is in some other rivalries that I've been a part of. But nonetheless. I think it's uh, I think it's intense. Okay, well, I'll find out. Um, you know, I, I'm not big on hate. I, I'm really not. I'm 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 big on just man. That this means something to so many people, so we should compete in a way out of love for our people, not necessarily for hate for other people. That's kind of the way I, I operate. But man, I, I I hope we compete because we love Auburn, and it means something to the Auburn people to compete against Georgia. So um, that that'll that'll be my approach, and um, but nonetheless, that love is a great motivator for me. So, yeah, Hugh, going back to Peyton, is there a big gulf between the guy and practice and the guy on the game field? Because practice was really good last week. I mean, he's uh, really sharp in practice. Really sharp in practice. Uh, last week, particularly, was really really sharp in practice, and. Uh, and um, we keep hoping to see that translate into the games. And again, it's a combination. It's not all Peyton, um, but sometimes it is. And he owns it. Uh, we had a good meeting last night. Um, and so we, we just got to try this week to, to get a plan in place that all execute and all understand totally. And that, that falls on Philip and his staff and ultimately on me. Uh, yes, you. Um, PFF uh, had a stat uh, saying Peyton was four of five on throws that feature play action. Is that a meaningful stat at all? Is that something you can build on? If we're, yeah, yeah, we, we love play action. Um, I'm trying to remember those um, in, the, in the play action world. I mean, the, uh, the, the week before, we were very effective in the RPO game, and in this game, um, we threw zero RPOs. Um, that's not something I'm happy about. Um, I probably am where I am today because I brought the RPO game to this conference or one of the, one of the first, I think people would say. And um, that sounded bad. I, I don't want to act like I created the RPO world or anything, but I do think I was one of the first to 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 bring it to this to this game with with tempo and um and we've gotten away from that and um i don't really understand that and so we've got to figure out our identity who we really are and and what can peyton do and what can robbie do and what can holden do and um 
we're, we're still, um, I know people don't like to hear it. People want success now. They want, they, they want you to win now every single game. And uh, I get all of that. Uh, this is not my first rodeo with taking over a program that, uh, that has struggled and um, certainly not uh, at all phased and um, hungrier than ever to, to move forward and get better. And we will. Um, some of that's going to help in recruiting, but that in the meantime, you got to get the ones you have better, and that's our job. And for us to be uh, all over the map, one week we throw effectively RPOs, and the next week we don't. Why? What? Why is that? And we've got to figure that out. And uh, another quick follow-up, which is here. play fakes. So <laughs> I don't know if they're talking about. You know, I, I don't know what, what they're exactly saying there, if play action versus RPO. For a change of pace recruiting, you mentioned um, how big of a weekend will this be for you, the Georgia weekend with recruits coming here, and how important can a weekend like this be to the future of this program? Huge. Uh, you know, I, I don't know that we'll have enough tickets for all the recruits that want to come. Um, I'm glad I'm not having to deal with that, but our recruiting staff is working diligently We've got official visits, so we've got top kids here unofficially, and, and so it'll be, a, it'll be a all hands on deck. Auburn putting their best foot forward, which they will. Our people are incredible. Uh, our place is incredible to watch a game at, the atmosphere. And so now we've got to, we've got to make sure they see what Auburn is really about while they're here for a game of this magnitude. Hey, Coach, uh, Kirby's coming in here, two-time defending national champion. I know you've been out of the conference for a few years, but from afar, watching what he's done and what he's built over there, what impresses you the most with that program and what he's done? Well, I, you know, I played Kirby his first year um, when I was still at Ole Miss, and I, I know kind of what he inherited um, because I coached in that game, and, and I know what the outcome was. and. Um, I think it was a, it's a great testament to his vision, to his work ethic, to his staff, to his administration being patient and allowing him to go have the years he needed to to recruit, and the dividends are paying off greatly. I mean, they're uh, one of the gold standards in college football right now, and, you know, you're recruiting a top three class every single year, and that's that's hard to compete with and and they're well coached and so you know you got to give them credit um i know it's a rivalry game but the truth is the truth and uh he's built a dang good football program there with so that means a lot of things or it means he's got the support from the administration it means he's got the support from the fans and um i, I don't know how long it took him i don't know what it take him three years or so to to get there or four years, I, I don't know. Some of y'all could, could do the research, but. His second year? Whew. That's, I don't know that that's accurate, but um, uh, anyway. So um, he did it pretty fast then. So that's That's pretty impressive. It's even more impressive. Coach, on that note of building a program, obviously internally and externally, sometimes there's not enough patience while you're trying to build your identity. And some of yeah. these growing pains that you're kind of already seeing this season, what's the reasonable amount of patience that a team should have to be able to build that identity and find success? Well, I don't get to decide that. The good thing is I don't worry about that anymore. I, I used to, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm older now and I am totally comfortable in the way we are uh, building this program and, and mentoring young people and teaching them uh, the lessons that football teaches for life. And um, I, the wins will come. I believe that firmly. Um, but uh, the, the whatever people's patience level is, is really I can't control that. So I can't worry about it. And... I really don't worry about it, and I worry about the people in this building, our administration, and and I worry about our fans too. But I can't control their their patience level, and I think it's I don't know. Can I be really candid? <laughs> I think it's I think it's I think it's kind of ridiculous uh, that uh, that 
those are already discussions in and around our kids. Uh, I, I do, but um, but it's not something that that we worry about. But they should expect us to improve, and that's a reasonable expectation. And and play hard. And and I think our kids have played hard. And so, um, I'll I'll let the, the other people that really matter decide uh, their their patience level. I know there's a lot of programs that have that have taken three to four to five years to, to get where they are now. And, you know, they're probably happy that they did that, but everybody's got to decide their own feelings on that. And I can't worry about that. You, uh, you're talking about something like no RPOs and those things. Uh, how involved are you in, in the game plan? And, and do you see yourself getting more involved in the play calling? Mm -hmm. Boy, this is a uh, this is something I'm struggling with. That's all I probably need to say. <laughs> uh, it's not that I don't have. It's just a, it's it's this is new for me, and um, I'm afraid it when 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 I get uh, um, if if I did try to get too involved, that it could cause confusion with um, terminology. Um, um, but obviously they're going through the game plan with me. Um, I mean, I'm, I don't, I go through the game plan with both sides and special teams. And, and so again, I thought the game plan was solid last week. Um, and so again, some of it is, uh, but it's, but it's a struggle for me. And I've, I've confessed that to everybody in the building, um, where that, that ultimately leads to, well, let's see how, how the year unfolds, but, it's, uh, you know, I'm confident that I, I, I'm going to be more involved. Um, but it's still difficult when it's, it's kind of not your, your terminology. And it's kind of hard to make, you know, a lot of adjustments right on the fly on the, on the sideline. And so anyway, uh, I think Monty and, and them are doing a great job right now of, of, of trying to correct the issues that we all see. And um, let's see how, how these weeks progress. But um, we were together a lot last night, a lot this morning, and we'll be this afternoon um, making sure. Now, look, you still got to block them, and you still got to go win a one-on-one. -on -one. And that's easier said than done right now with the talent level that, that we're facing with a, a Georgia or an LSU in particular, that are coming up the next two, and even A and M, but I will say I thought we won some one on ones, and just didn't get the 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 completion for whatever reason, pressure or didn't understand the progression properly, or um, and all of that we have to get corrected as coaches. Yeah, Coach, um, you know, everybody's been super impressed, I think yourself as well, with Eugene and just the, you know, the heart that he plays with. Who's that guy on the offensive side of the ball? Who's the Eugene Asante of the offense that just kind of matches a similar intensity like that? Yeah, we're, we're searching, truthfully. Um, that was one of the things I just – I think we've got to get more uh, swagger on the offensive side and, and um, like that. I, the, the most positive guy by far to this point has been Luke Deal. Uh, I think he's the one that uh, has a good grasp on how this league plays out, how difficult these games are and how challenging they are for 60 minutes and and how you can have three bad possessions in a row. Um, we're not the only ones that, that have those. and um, and But yet you have to maintain this, this positive attitude that the next one could be the one that matters. And um, he, he's, been, he's been definitely that. Uh, for the offensive side, for sure. Coach, you've talked about the talent gap between, you know, some of the top teams of the conference and where you feel like Auburn is at right now. You know, what message do you send to your team in spite of that to make them feel like they have what it takes to beat these teams week in and week out? Yeah, that's, the, that's, that's a balancing act. I just uh, – I'm always truthful with our team. And I tell them every Monday in our truth meeting this afternoon, hey, you're the you're, – you're, this game, you're the favorite. You should win it. This game is a toss-up. This game, you'll be the underdog. That doesn't mean you can't win it. And here's how we're going to win it. Um, so I've done that everywhere I've ever been. 
Um, and I think it uh, it's it creates a transparency and authentic authenticity. Um, at the same time, I, I, I tell them to be very clear on the fact that I've never walked into a game thinking we can't win it and they shouldn't either. And so I give them plenty of examples of um, you're not supposed to take a Liberty team and be Arkansas either. Um, but or Virginia Tech or or an Ole Miss to beat Alabama, but we've we've done that, and we can do it here too. And so that's how I go about it. For you guys over the past three games, do you think maybe the script is getting thrown off a little bit at the beginning? I know you talked about you feel good about your, your game plan. What do you yeah. kind of throw in to factor that? Yeah, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember the other games where we had a, we drove it right down the field the week before and didn't get it in the end zone. We threw it on first down and second down and then had a penalty, I think. Um, and I don't know that we had another possession in the, se in the first quarter in that game that I can remember because we, we went right down the field on every possession. So obviously the game plan, uh, other than the, the tight red zone, was fine there. This game, I mean, we rattled off – Four first downs the first drive, I believe, and then uh, the second drive the same way in, uh, in this game. And you got in field goal range, and we shot ourselves in the foot either with a penalty or, or, or with a sack. Um, so maybe have to evaluate, you know, when we're um, – maybe we have to go to more max protection. Uh, we'll have to look at that. But um, I don't – uh, again, we should have had points in the first quarter, but we didn't, and that's got to get fixed. Wanted to ask you about Holden getting that last drive. Just how important do you think it was for him to get that experience, and what did you see out of him as a young quarterback? I think Holden, if um, if he ends up at some point being the guy, he's just got to have a lot of reps. Um, I love the way he seemed poised. Uh, his throws were inaccurate. You know, it was it was two balls out of bounds that really could have, if if catchable, to have a shot. Um, he threw one really good one, uh, but really it was about one for five on on accuracy um, in in those. But it's I, I, again, you're talking about a guy that we hadn't getting given quality reps, and I think um, I think he with the quality reps, I think, could be more accurate because he, he has the quickest release and he stands tall in the pocket and uh, I don't remember him having a, an enormous amount of pressure around him at that time, so that remains to be seen. But um, something that, uh, that we definitely, we've got an open week coming up that we've got to, we've got to look at a lot of things. I've got a whole list that I'm formulating. All right, Coach. Thanks for yep, thank you guys.